Catch Amazing Minds Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time on YouTube, Google, Apple and Spotify for podcasters. Zambia's first late night show. I'm good. Say mm. more. Say more. <laughs> like, what more is there? <laughs> uh, I'm good and you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm good and you? Uh, Let's do it again. Yeah, many of I'm good and you. Someone was told, happy birthday. Oh, thank you. You uh, too. You too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a bit there again. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Surely not. Yeah. Anyway, you are, you are welcome to the show. Please do subscribe. Hit that bell and share. Uh, we are thankful to the new subscribers. Even though it has, <laughs> it has been stagnant. But yeah. <laughs> I saw that promise of breakup. Was of, was of doubt. <laughs> hey, well, I think the two new subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> who have so uh, gladly given us a portion of their time to watch yeah. uh, this show that we put so much work into. Yeah. Uh, two is good, man. We're always thankful. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, two, two is good. The, yeah. uh, if, if, if Jesus came to die just for me, mm. it would have been enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know you want to argue. <laughs> no. Uh, but watch Bible Talks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Catch uh, Bible Talks every Friday. Same time, 20 hours per minute. Pal. Exactly. And uh, the rest of the show is available Mondays and Wednesdays. Uh, 20 hours Central African time right here on YouTube. I almost forgot what I was saying. And the podcast <laughs> is available on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Yeah. So today's Monday show, we have a lot of interesting stuff to discuss. Um that has been happening in the news this past week. Once again, please do subscribe. Hit that notification bell and share. Uh, it's very amazing that we sometimes reach stages in our lives where we are almost dependent on other people. This is one of them. We are depending on you. Mm-hmm. We really need you to, to subscribe. Yeah, very much. <laughs> we, in fact, we love you. <laughs> to every subscriber, I love you. Preach, preach. <laughs> 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 anyway, <laughs> what's on the news today? <laughs> that felt a bit awkward. Does your girlfriend know that you, you tell other people that you love them? That I <laughs> especially <laughs> YouTube subscribers. Ah, we shall surely cut that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what to do, guys. <laughs> <laughs> guys, don't even try. We need to see something. Uh, yeah, by the way, the team here is growing. We'll start airing the show live soon, but we'll give you that announcement uh, nicely once 10 more people subscribe. <laughs> but they are load shedding. <laughs> Look at that. Once they load shedding once the we schedule. Ma- once we master the load shedding schedule, yeah, we'll, we'll start giving you the show live. I think giving the show live is a bit more... Uh, anyway, you'll see. <laughs> yeah. You'll see. Yeah, so today we have a number of interesting things to discuss. Today's show feels a little bit playful. You know, it's uh, mm. it doesn't feel as serious as, mm. as always. Maybe because you're smiling a little bit more. Oh, really? Yeah. It's a comedy show, I mean. And he is smiling too. <laughs> it's a comedy <laughs> show, my friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so today we're discussing Zambia police to kick out junkie officers. And trust me, this is not what you think it is. Um, then we'll discuss Shikap Washer's widow appearing in court for the alleged murder and 
uh, Mopina, Mop, Mopani, Mopani Copper Mines has been resurrected from the dead. <laughs> yeah, so uh, not much after all. We're discussing a couple of things, but we hope you do get engaged in this. Leave your comments in the comment section. Uh, tell us what you think about the show, what you would like to see on the show. Give us your, uh, your suggestions. Take the comment section today as a suggestion box. Especially. If it gets too far, we'll delete your comment. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, we don't. You can call us anything. <laughs> or we'll add you to empty teams, make the loudest noise. You don't but, say. Yeah. Uh, we really appreciate your feedback, what you think about the show, what you would like to see on the show, what topics you think we should discuss. Uh, tell us what you think about Bible Talks, about the educative, educative segment. Today I have a lot of tongue twisters. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, but um, basically this is Amazing Minds, Zambia's first late night show. And we're here to entertain, educate, and inform you. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And make them laugh. And make them make them laugh. I guess yeah, that's, there. I guess that's covered in entertainment, but Mr. Jofia didn't did not process that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I like your emphasis on Kufana. What are you trying to say? Let's have a somewhere, but it's number in the same. It was a unification, eh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Zambia police has promised to get rid of junkie officers, and I, as 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 I say to you earlier, junkie officers may not be what you think it is, because junkie, in my understanding, is mm. something totally different. What do you understand by by junkie? Junkie, I thought these are addicts or something. Yeah, like mm. people who can do with alcohol, yeah. without alcohol rather. Not or, only alcohol. Or, or dra drugs, mm. I guess. Yeah. Um, a lot of things. A lot of things. Yeah, anyway, I don't know. I feel like a I'm junkie, a, a junkie is someone I feel like I'm also a junkie somewhere. <laughs> you think so? Yeah, like a crypto junkie. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So someone who eats a lot of fries, mm. that would be a fry junkie? Someone who eats a lot of Nshima, Nshima junkie. Know, guy, yeah. Would junkie generally be an addiction? A person who suffers from an addiction? I don't know. Maybe we should find that out. Because it's an may, English word, right? Maybe we can, maybe we can do that, eh? Yeah, we should. Ah, no. I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, yeah, but we'll, we'll check. Anyway. You, can you guys check for us what a junkie... <sighs> what am I doing? What a junkie is. And send, just send it here, then beam it on the screen. The Zambia Police Service Command has embarked on a vigorous exercise of flushing out of its system junkie officers, in brackets, politically inclined, who were recruited in the previous regime and have refused to reform and align themselves to the code of ethics. Uh, so, uh, you know, yeah. again, I think that uh, when we're talking about that word junkie, we should also understand that... Uh, here in our country, we've sort of uh, Zambianized the word, right? Yeah. So he said, "Tuma kamba ti majanki." So majanki, ni wa jama guys wa onika munga ti maybe they are bad doti doti, they are drug addicts. Yeah. And these days, even people who are petty thieves, you know, these small time thieves, uh, even those who break into people's vehicles, they are calling them junkies. Yeah. And our uh, guys, we meet my pays a shame my streets. I onika che disgruntled munga ka ribena vochi ita. Not even junkie. Uh -huh. Criminality. So we've we've sort of uh, attached this junkie word with to, criminality. To, to criminality. Yeah. And also I should mention that uh, the the inspector general of police, it, it came from him actually. Yeah. Yeah. He mentioned at some point that uh, the patriotic front uh, uh, recruited junkies <laughs> <laughs> into the police service. <laughs> But he didn't mean it in the way that we mean it in Zambia. Is he, he meant it in the way that we mean it in Zambia. Oh, so in my opinion. Okay, okay. I understand. Mm. I'm, I'm trying to do something here, but it's not working. I don't yeah, know if so I'm see. sure these are the junkies that uh, he's talking about. Um, okay, yeah. okay. That that does make sense. Uh, does it? It it does make sense that that he, he would say um the previous government employed junkies and mm. then later on referred to them as the junkies that won't conform to the new government. No, but you know, the thing is that he called them junkies a long time ago, not, not uh, up. It's not even the same com um, p p commissioner who did that, right? It's the same. Oh, it's the same? Yes. But this is a long time ago. It could be like two or three months ago when ah. he said that, yeah. Okay. Anyway, mm. uh, in an interview, Inspector General of Police, Graffel 
Musamba regrets that some police officers have opted to remain loyal to past leaders and are proving to be rebellious despite being given several chances to reform. Mr. Musamba said plans to have most cadres Kada police officers retrained have failed due to lack of funds to support the the the, the program. I, I assume the mm. the service has instead been providing the rebel officers with adequate counsel to help them reform an olive branch they have deliberately refused to embrace. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sorry about the grammar and everything. You know that was uh, a an, uh, a post from X. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so there are those limitations. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, fine. But then also it shows that eh, now about uh, Zambia dating was very serious. <laughs> yeah, because uh, friends who got paid uh, pages, and you know that's like one of the biggest tabloids. Yeah, if you got a paid uh, account, mm, or, you're actually paying fourteen dollars. This is fourteen dollars a month somewhere there. Yeah, uh, and and you are no, it's less than ten dollars, and you're writing wrongly. Oh, fourteen dollars must be Facebook. Yeah, okay. Uh, so yeah. these guys are not paying. This is why they don't have those privileges of writing long posts and everything. They just write a comma thread. Just do a comma thread. Help me understand. So people who are verified because they pay, mm. some of the privileges is that they don't yes. have the restriction of. No. Yeah. Ah. Mm. Ah. Yeah. Those are some of the changes that uh, Elon Musk brought mm. to mm. X, mm. formerly Twitter, T- treating it like a business money. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so so what do you think generally about uh, non-conformists okay. of police officers? Yeah, I, so you know yeah. this this issue, uh, as I said before, you caught them junkies. Mm. The way <laughs> the, the way you're looking at me, eh. like, <laughs> guys, I'm Boka, my mind is oh, well, 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 Really? Was that Langana can take a small camera setting? So if you're Boka, my mind is as I see them, they're always they're guilty, are always afraid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Look that, at that. Uh, yeah. So, by uh, Inspector General uh, Grafeo Musamba, mm-hmm. this man has been, which is, I, first of all, it's dangerous what they're doing. Yeah. And how they are doing it. Mm-hmm. Because uh, this is a very sensitive department, so to say. Uh, these are the police. Yeah. So, there's a way in which that they should have done what they wanted to do. If it's a cleanup, if, you know, if, if, if uh, the Patriotic Front got their cadres, who have got uh, this uh, alignment to them yeah. and they got them into the police service so that they should be doing their work, more police. It's very wrong. Mm. And to a great extent, I think uh, we need the search to be flushed out. Yeah. Now, this is the inspector general of police. This is someone who we should think is a professional, right? Yeah. So it is, it is not good for him to come out in the open to seem like he's also taking a side of a political party. Mm. Mm. Because oh, now yeah. <laughs> it looks like it, uh, it's just like he's saying that oh, a PF is around and and they're failing to conform with the party that's in power right now. Yeah. So we're removing them. Because, uh, because alleg- allegiance is to the presidency yes. and not the president. Exactly. Mm. Because if we're saying, and also we might be mistaken because there are other people who joined during the PF, but they've got nothing to do with the PF. Yeah. So now what we risk uh, doing is uh, these guys who will be employed during the uh, the UPND regime or time, mm. are we going then to say that afterwards they should also be flushed out because they were uh, they placed their allegiance to the past uh, government yeah. or the past political party? And then where should they find their next jobs? You see, yeah, yeah. So I think it's a, it's a very dangerous way of doing things, especially if you are coming out like that. And he's been coming out a lot, the Inspector General. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that uh, the inspector general has been doing a bad job. Also, a very ge- bad job. generally, I think it's a bit it's a bit of a hard uh, thing to uh, to determine. Like, there's what what exactly should someone have done mm-hmm. to prove that they are on the exactly. PF side yes. or the UPND side? Mm-hmm. Is there some kind of a, a measurement mm-hmm. standard to say, okay, this shows that you are allegiant to this party, uh, or does the police work as you say mm. have to be neutral, non-partisan? And mm. I think you've mentioned this before. How that? Yeah. The police don't have to take sides. No, yeah, of course. Yeah, so yeah, because they are the refs when it comes to even political stuff. Yeah, they are the refs. So if we have the Inspector General of Police saying socialism cannot work in Zambia, maybe in other countries, <laughs> that's a big problem. He's, he's become a political pundit. Yes. Mm. Yeah. By the way, he came from retirement. He was retired by the PF. Mm. Yeah. Ah. So he could also have some bad blood. So there is, we we have legitimate reason to believe that there could be some bad blood. There is yes. evidence. Yeah. There is evidence. Of course, and mm. just by the way that he's been uh, conducting mm. himself mm. in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Since he became IG, people can't uh, uh, have those uh, rallies, the political yeah. parties. 
Uh, Though there's, there's, there's have... one thing about that when we talk about rallies and uh, mm. peaceful protests yes. and, and the likes, yes. my only the only reason why I think the police are somehow justified in the way they act is the necessity for a permit. That in itself mm. means every gathering mm -hmm. is at their discretion. Yes, it is. So that's the thing. It's at their discretion, not because they should take sides. It's at their discretion because of the security concerns. What if it has something to do with the history of a party's behavior? No, you can't say that. If you're trained police officers, you are because the police have got even I'll, I'll give you an even a department. I'll give you an example. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, if, if we look at one of the best countries or one of the biggest economies in the world, the mm. United States, mm. they talk about how uh, a huge population of the young people, young black men, mm. end up in prison. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you re when you read the statistics, they make up only about fourteen percent. Black people make up about about less than twenty percent of the entire American population. Mm -hmm. Yet it is said that they are responsible for about seventy percent of all violent cri violent crime. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So that statistic <coughs> is showing you how a small group of people mm -hmm. is responsible for such large volumes mm -hmm. of, of crime. Mm -hmm. That means the police will naturally, mm -hmm. as human beings, mm -hmm. have an attitude. So you see, I hear you. Mm. And if I was in the position of the police, the attitude that you're supposed to have is that you can't also look at every black person as a criminal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if a black person comes and they want to conduct a a, a public uh, meeting or whatever, mm. and then you are suspecting that ah, these black people, they are so violent. Mm. Your job as a police is to make sure that you double down on the manpower and everything. Do you love your dogs? Your intelligence and everything. Do you love dogs? For are security, you, are, yes. are you a dog person? Are you afraid of no, dogs? No, not quite. No, no, I'm not. Oh, you're not? Yeah. Ah, I, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> I, I, I don't like dogs. I don't okay. like dogs coming near me for, mm. me, for many reasons. It's not just about fear. Mm. The fact that it's not a human being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, it's complicated to explain, but that plays a role. The fact that it's not a human being makes me view it differently. So when it comes close to me, I feel some type of way. Uh, is that a bad thing to say for dog lovers? I, I, I don't really care, but I, I want to know your point. Anyway. <coughs> When a dog comes close to me, mm -hmm. I don't wait for it to do anything. Uh, I will act. Yes. Before it shows me any signs uh -huh, of very good. or violence, nah, good. it's because Welcome I have a predisposition. Yes. Um, that has come from legitimate experiences. Dog, yes. Dogs chased me when I was a kid. Okay. Dogs tried to bite uh -huh, me. Uh -huh. You understand, right? Yeah, you're not so obliged to love there's, dogs. There's no one in this planet mm -hmm. who can love dogs and convince me that there's something good about them. Okay. Uh, no one. Okay. Yeah. But can you go around killing dogs? No, not really. Yeah, but you can choose not to keep a dog. Yeah, I can choose not to keep a dog. Because and if I go into some, if job. I come to your place, for example, and you have a dog in your yard, mm -hmm. I will drive out if you don't restrain it. I you will see? not enter the house. Yes, because now that's your personal space. Yes. You, yeah, you've got the right to not enter someone else's personal space if you feel like you are not comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Now the police's job is not to work on emotions or on how they feel on hunches. Yeah. Yeah. They as if they have a hunch, they work upon it. But you can't eliminate the human aspect from a police officer. Yeah, that is true. The mm -hmm. point where, that I'm trying to put across is that there's a reason why we have got uh, police that deal with uh, crowds, uh, even riots, uh, okay. violent okay. riots. Okay, that makes sense. Yes. Structure. Yes. Mm -hmm. So for them, they don't have to like the PA for anything. What they have to do is when these guys, because they're also citizens. Mm. So if these guys say that they want to have a meeting, they don't have to like the socialist part. So if mm. the socialist party want to have a meeting, even if they've got a history of violence, even if the PF have got a history of violence, their job as the police is to make sure that eh, your violence is a cartel. Yeah. Yeah. Even if Babafo Meleza want to rally the Kwankara violence, it's not in their space to say that the next time won't allow you. Or next yeah. time they come, they say, no, 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 no. You guys saw what the PF did. No, it's not in there. But they have to go back and <laughs> it's talked among themselves. No, yes. guys, let's reinforce next yeah, time. Exactly. Mm. Yes. That, that that makes sense. Yeah, so the IG, mm. I think it's very wrong for him to come out like that. It's, it's not in his place to speak that way. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, moving on, we, we we are following up on an issue we we brought up a couple of a couple of weeks, maybe months ago by now. Uh, former former Air Force uh, Air Force Commander Ronish Kapwasha's death, uh, quite tragic. He was shot dead, died about a day later, right? 
that, that was about a day later. Yeah, there yeah. was a lot of uh, mixed information. The, okay, the family it's, was so secretive. It's, it's, it's a bit hard for us to tell you when exactly yes, he died. Yes, yeah, because the news of him dying came out the day that he was shot. And then, then people they came to rescinded clarify. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So uh, former Zambia Air Force Commander Ronish Kapoche's widow, Jen Lusengo, has been committed <laughs> to the High Court for, for trial in a case she's accused of killing the retired Lieutenant General. The 73-year-old housewife is charged with murder which can earn her up to life imprisonment. She's accused of having shot her husband on January 15, 2024, using a double barrel shotgun at the couple's Ibex Hill home. After the alleged shooting, the 76 year old former cabinet minister was rushed to Minasoko Military Hospital where he died. Mrs. Miss Lusengo was later arrested and charged with murder. Yesterday, the Sombre <laughs> Honestly speaking, I don't know yeah. <laughs> the correct pronunciation of this word. Yesterday, the sombre or somba. Somba. <laughs> I know, right? Did I just say sombre? <laughs> no, but I know that sombre. Yeah, wait. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Woo, sombre. <laughs> Yesterday, the somba looking accused appeared in court wearing a black outfit and a blue pullover with a black chitambala or head wrap. Lusaka magistrate Kigan Litia then read out the charge the accused whom in response said, I do understand the charge. A public prosecutor then informed the court that the letter to have the accused committed to the high court for trial was ready before court. The offense the accused stands charged for is with, what am I saying? The offense the accused stands charged with is tried by the high court Instructions for the summary trial are before the High Court. Magistrate Litia said before committing the woman to the high said before committing the woman to the high court. Uh, <laughs> crazy. It's not easy. Uh, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the accused carrying a plastic with some food was later taken back to correctional facility using the Kasalanga prison car. Okay, now another thing is that, thing yeah, some, some, some details uh, are necessary. necessary yeah. She came with a plastic, she was wearing a chitambala. Mm. She, oh, you think it would be easy to read? Anyway, <laughs> we are using your stuff. It's not easy. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, she has appeared in court. We do not know yet uh, what direction the case would take. But what we know now is that officially the case is in court and... Um, Clearly, she said she understands when the charges were read to her, which I don't know would imply that she is pleading guilty. I think the time for pleading has not come yet. Has no, it? no, of course not. Yeah. So yeah, this has got a long way to go, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, if, not if, very long, probably, if uh, if the things are straightforward. If she, if, if she pleads guilty. Did she uh, turn herself in? No, I don't think so. She was arrested. She was arrested. Mm. Did she agree to having done it or do we know those details? No. The <laughs> we, details don't aren't... Know. we don't know because she didn't mention that's why she was in court. She said she understood. Mm. Yeah. So I don't think that uh, any, we can say that right now. Yeah. yeah. But you know, this story just, uh, it shows us something that you never stop learning. You know, yeah. and also after I watched the video when she was in court, because mm. a lot of journalists actually took interest in that. She's so old. You know? 73. Yeah, so when you see 73, it's just a number. But uh, when you actually see her. Yeah. And she, it also makes she looks me, like my grandma. It also makes me wonder when I saw the story for the first time mm -hmm. that a 76 year old man was mm -hmm. shot with a double barrel uh, shotgun. And, she, and he survived. The level, yeah, the level of damage that must have done to mm -hmm. him, mm -hmm. it's it's terrible. Yeah, true. It's It must have been like a very painful death if he didn't die immediately. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you see, the other thing I wanted to say about this is that I feel for the family. Mm. Your father is dead, and now your mother and is dead. Yeah, both your parents. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's, yeah that's, it that's should really be crazy. such a sad thing. We sympathize yeah. with the Shikapwashas, yeah. and uh, our thoughts and prayers are with them. As yeah, you know, she's so old, man. I felt bad with her. So Evangelist T is praying for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. She's so old. Eh? Yeah. And you know, for them to get to that extent, if she really is the one who did it, mm. eh, <laughs> life see JD come on. Ah, life. Because they, they have probably been together for decades. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. there's no one size fits. So it just calls to tell us. It, it also makes you wonder, could they have had a difference that late that they never had before earlier in their marriage? That yeah, led a, to a shooting. Yeah. Like, so the point is like, that there's no one size up, fits. Could there have popped up such a new difference? Mm-hmm. 
that had never popped up in all their earlier years of marriage. Uh, would indeed be possible that uh, that thing was recurring until someone or, got or, or maybe it's like a, a repeated behavior that yeah because most to... of the times we hear that uh and you know we we don't shed a lot of light on gender-based violence that is uh, on men right yeah yeah we we and it's understandable because most of it is uh, well, well, perpetrated but, uh, by, by men by the way when you say shed more light mm-hmm. what do you mean exactly so what, when when there's a story of let's say there's gender-based violence and it's on a man from a woman mm. uh we we sort of uh just sweep it under the carpet isn't that what we do with women as well in a different context though mm. we never investigate why the violence occurred so you are saying that we never investigate to to to, to make the man look like it's justified we are not trying to justify mm-hmm. except no i said ne- to make it look like no uh, i don't think the aim would mm-hmm. be to make it look like mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. naturally Mm-hmm. If you go to the hospital having been bitten by a snake, mm-hmm. won't they ask you questions? They will. If if the if a house burnt down, won't the firemen ask questions? Mm-hmm. Don't they institute an investigation? Mm-hmm. Even if a plane crashed, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they are going to investigate. Mm-hmm. There are actually components in a plane that mm-hmm. are able to uh, that are almost indestructible that are able to keep recordings. Like black box. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh every case mm-hmm. I can mention here mm. we will institute some level of inst- investigation except a man beating a woman. Ah mm. there is no investigation involved. There you are guilty and you go. Uh, oh. That's that's just how it's treated generally. You may not be found guilty in the court of law mm. but in public opinion in mm. in in the court of public opinion mm. you definitely be found guilty. There is no due process to know did it really happen the way it is said to have happened? that's just what i think i think for women for when a woman is violent towards a man we don't investigate the details because we think ah he must have deserved it it must have been a repeated behavior for which he was shot uh mm-hmm. wow yeah, i hear you yeah. i hear you actually that was my point that's what i wanted to say because uh well maybe that wasn't my point maybe what i wanted to say is that uh, the, it could be that there was a behavior that was recurring and uh, we are commenting on this just uh, loosely right yeah 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 we're yeah. just yeah Yeah, so for there was a case where a, a woman killed uh, her husband in Karingaringa. Yeah. That woman is actually a bit famous. There was a kama video. You know, an obscene video. A guy was taken in Petawoki saying yeah. Katundu very nice. You remember that? No, no. Oh, you didn't see that? No. So the a guy was taking a video of a woman naked. She was drunk. Yeah. She was actually snoring. Uh oh. And then vi- taking a video of everything. And saying Katundu very nice, in Aimenya usiko ose, you know stuff like that. Huh? So now there was an uproar. People started talking to say, yeah. "No, this is gender-based violence. Why was you? Why would you allow this?" And Wait, the guy on, is in prison right now. It was on Facebook. I think uh, the guy was sending to to the friends. I don't know. It's uh, been a while though. So it, it's kind of just circulated with. Yes, you. yes, yes. Mm, mm. Yeah, it's been a while though. Yeah, that guy is in prison, 18 yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that there was also that woman because she's the one who killed the husband mm. in Karingari. And then she moved. Oh, wait. So the same woman who killed the husband mm-hmm. got drunk mm-hmm. and then the guy took advantage of her. That was our way after now they even case your husband did you know, in asylum court. She was never arrested for that? She was, but she was not uh, in prison. Yeah. Why? So that's the, that's what I'm trying to okay, say that. Okay, yeah, so there I was there were, there were cases now also of issues of uh, uh the oh, man Oh, but when violence was done towards her mm-hmm. where she didn't even die. Mm-hmm. Ah, exactly. yeah. he was jailed for how long? Uh 18 years. 18 years. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, so that's kind of how it works uh when it comes to men and women uh one has due the due process followed. While the other doesn't mm. uh, and we both we avoid questions in both cases only that the questions we avoid are different yeah and yeah. the other point is that uh, now this is for the men i think that of course we should lead the charge of the fight against gender based violence yeah why because men mostly are the perpetrators mostly it's men who are the perpetrators I, do, in fact know, if we know, had to do say know, do you know what i think about that mm. Mm. I I to a large extent think that's anecdotal evidence meaning mm. this is evidence that is not uh statistically proven in, ter- in terms of a very factual basis it is when i say anecdotal <coughs> it's because even the statistics they have mm-hmm. are from word of mouth it's unproven data it's like when they say um 
two uh, percent of rape is not reported. If it's not reported, how did you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you see, if it's reported, yeah, then those statistics would stand, right? Yeah, but then the reporting also mm. is not empirical data. The reporting is based on someone's story. So you are gathering evidence based mm. on people's word of mouth, his word or her but, word against his. Then you gather all that evidence mm -hmm. as anecdotal evidence. You pile it up and then you say most violent violence mm -hmm. is mental. So if, if you so if you get case by case, right? Yeah. There's this case. You say okay, there's one which is a man on woman. Yeah. It's simple. You don't have to know the other details. No. The number two is. Uh, uh, do, do you know why I'm saying this? <clears throat> because. In a case where a, a man was violent towards a woman, mm -hmm. there are cases where, to begin with, the woman was violent towards him. Yes. Then he reacted. Mm -hmm. Then, even the other way around. Then, even the one who killed the, yeah. the husband in Karingaringa, apparently the man was so violent. Violent. On then him. she she reacted. Yes. Ah, now now now. And here's, apparently, yes. Here's, here's the interesting part. Uh -huh. When a man is violent towards a woman mm -hmm. first, mm -hmm. she retaliates. Their memory remains. When a man, when a woman is violent towards a man, mm -hmm. the moment he ter, he retaliates, mm -hmm. did I? It's okay. Re retaliates. <laughs> retaliates. <laughs> well, I'm <a> retaliates. <laughs> I was about to give you a powerful point. And the moment, the moment he retaliates. Come on, man. The punch uh -huh. that he hits her with mm. rubs off both their memory <laughs> of how she struck him first. <laughs> and so when they go to the police, you will find. If a woman goes to give a report, mm. it is irrelevant and useless for the man to bring up that she hit him first. It is not. It, to you, it is. But well, trust so, me, to public so opinion. So listen, listen. Yeah? If we are living in a home with a woman, yeah. she slaps me first, mm. maybe twice. Mm. Uh, it hurts, but I've got no visible injury. Then I stab her. <laughs> and then we got the police. And then I stay, but she, she slapped me first. Is that going to make sense to you? <laughs> Of course not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Way to exaggerate it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just generally think um, it's a woman. It's more believable for a woman to say a it man. Is, uh, a man well, I'm me. not disputing that. Mm. And you know, even when it comes to reporting. Yeah. The men are actually shy to report. Yeah. Because they think they won't be believed. Umaume. Yes. And also there's that stereo those stereotypes. Yeah, but my no, point. No, even I will look down on you. Yeah. <laughs> you <Anyway>. see, <laughs> they start like this. <laughs> now, now, no, guys, if you guys, if you're being beaten, <laughs> feel free to talk to me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you look down on them. <laughs> I will not look down on you, at least not in front of your face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, my point is that uh, we need to do more, especially as men. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the majority is the men. I know you say the that ma the majority of 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 the people beating the other. Yes. The majority of the perpetrators, mm. yeah, they're the men. So if as the men start this uh, discussion <laughs> and we are so firm about I, it. I, I, need, I need statistics for that. There are we, statistics, need, bro. To put if you look at the statistics, it's mm. probably 90, 10. No, but here's my point again. Mm. There is what we call, uh, when I was in university, we, we, mm. we took, I studied economics mm. uh, as one of my, mm. and we learned about quantitative versus qualitative economics mm. when the if the if the government of zambia tells us that mm. inflation has gone down mm -hmm. it's now at five percent mm. but millimil is still it is five, not by the way inflation is be, like 15, yeah this is uh, an unrealistic example <laughs> so <laughs> yeah but millimil is still at 500 quacha which is a realistic example uh <laughs> <laughs> oh not quite <laughs> <laughs> I just well, under, under, under this government. Yeah, anyway, so <laughs> okay, no, that was a joke. So, <laughs> so imagine if they say the the economy, the inflation has gone down to five percent, but minimum is still at five hundred kwacha. What that means is there is a qualitative improvement, a mm. quantitative rather mm. improvement in the economy. Mm -hmm. It's reflecting in the numbers, mm -hmm. but the quality of people's lives are not changing. So when you talk about statistics, mm. there is qualitative and quantitative. Mm. The quality of what has been recorded as data mm. matters even though we don't consider that. So there are certain reports that are given, which are questionable, but mm. are still added. It's like when people said mm. uh, COVID deaths, mm. but someone died of a road accident. <laughs> so- yeah, I hear you, mm. I hear you, and it does matter. Yeah. It does matter that we look at the quality, but then if you are looking at numbers such as a ratio of uh, nine to one, mm. I mean, do we first have to start looking at the the actual quality of the data 
before we start working on why is it that mostly it's perpetrated by men. So maybe uh, we should start talking to men. I think we can yes. question the quality of data. If, I'm more, saying, if mm-hmm. more men are committing suicide, then it raises questions about the data. Why are men committing suicide at way higher rates all over the world? Yes. Why it's, are more men in prison? Uh, exactly. Why mm. are more men in prison? Mm. Uh, the, the, the truth is this. Men are not treated the same way uh, as as women. And to be honest, women want to be men, but don't want to be treated like men. So the, that's, a, that's a long discussion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's not let's not get into that. Mm. But the way a man is treated mm. is is far much more different than the way a woman is treated, especially in such cases. So to give room for questioning mm. is there, especially when you can see that men's mental health seems to constantly be declining, mm-hmm, mm. Uh, especially with statistics that are showing them that they are nine times more violent. Uh, no, I didn't say that. That was just an example. <laughs> it's also an example. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so, anyway, yeah, yeah you see, um, You've mentioned something very important. More men committing suicide. They can also add more men going to prison. Yeah. More men working the the hard labor in the mines and everything and other things. Yeah. And you said do some women want to be men and blah blah blah. I, I might get what you mean. Maybe you mean uh, they want to be men when it comes to uh, we should get equal pay. But kabwe la trakio sedu sa masaka ya fertilizer wazaka mbati wamuna indan confess wamuna. Yeah. So I understand when you look at it like that. And so also we're, we're getting very little female representation in the plumbing field yeah all that yeah and you know <laughs> <laughs> so i understand what you're saying and it is something that we should look at as you are saying if we've got those statistics we should look at them yeah yeah maybe next but, show we'll have but, the statistics we'll yes see. but yeah. the truth is that we shouldn't also stop looking at the other statistics of the women mm. because if we've got more women getting killed by men or the, even their spouses mm. if we've got more violence being perpetrated or uh, uh on men, on women mm. from men then also we should look at that can and we, also see how we can, can we fight agree? it yeah. starting from the source who are perpetrating it <laughs> that's why i say it mm. it's very hard for you to say if you make a statement saying there's no reason to hit a woman the statement is is true you shouldn't hit a woman there's no reason to hit anyone <laughs> exactly i like that no reason mm. to hit unless one hour come no reason to hit anyone mm-hmm is a very loose statement. There are reasons you should just shouldn't hit them. Anyway, moving on. Of course, uh, I, my, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. These were talking about blanket statements, right? Yeah, yeah, no. I know, but I mean if someone came to attack me in my house, yeah, and I've got my family there, I mean if I have to, I'll kill I know, and that's why I'm that also saying when, when you talk about it, it the source, not, mm-hmm. when you talk about the source of the violence, mm-hmm. there are many other factors, mm-hmm. like how do men get upset? Uh, what could a woman possibly do to make a man upset? Mm-hmm. Or maybe women are never annoying; they are levitating above the rest of us. Yeah. So you see, the other thing is that I'll cut that part. <laughs> 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 the other thing is that eh, we need to detest violence in all forms. Yeah. So you see, when that's why and then you kill someone who is among someone who was intruding. Mm-hmm. He won't go to prison for murder. Yeah. Now, if you are with your wife and your wife slaps you every day, mm-hmm. and one day you stab her with a knife. <laughs> That's a different story. Yeah, but the anomalies, the the, the cases of men retaliating mm. towards a, a uh, beating with uh, murder uh-huh. is that's a bit of a stretch. And not only that, I no, think- no, no, it's not because, I mean, the other thing could be just as simple as you found that your wife was cheating. Yeah, yeah. That, I think because a lot of people they, have killed. They, they try those under a different category altogether: crimes of passion. So it depends on how it happened. Yeah, yeah. If it was pre uh, premeditated, mm. it's mad. Melissa forethought. Yeah. So, mm. but if you find you find your wife on your matrimonial bed, and you you commit murder or you kill uh, mm. any one of the two or the three, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Or the four. <laughs> With where the world is going to, they could be ten. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if that happens and you kill someone, yeah, uh, it won't be like you planned it and what they look at those things. Mm. Yeah. So the quality. 
<laughs> so yes, the quality is important and uh, no one is saying it's not important. Yeah. That's why we look at the quality as well. That's why we look at the quality. Anyway, mm. let's see if next week we, we can have statistics. I think this is an interesting subject. Yeah. We, we could create yeah. a whole segment just for, for, for yeah. this subject. To be honest, I thought that subject was going to be the shortest of them. I know. I'm actually, to be the longest. I'm actually shocked. We've run <laughs> through the whole show. On, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, in light of in, la- in light of what we told you, Mopani, what's going on? Mm. Yeah, in other news, uh, mm-hmm. President Hakainde Hichilema has said Mopani oh. copper mines will experience a breath of fresh air following the arrival of its new investor, International Resources Holdings. Yeah, so this was uh, in a couple of statements the president made. Anyway, uh, International Resources Holding operating as subsidiary Delta Mining has invested 130 million US dollars in the mining giant, thereby acquiring a majority stake of 51% in a bid to revitalize operations. This afternoon, the head of state, well, it's a couple, couple of days ago, this afternoon, the, the head of state graced an event at the mine's central offices in Kitwe, where the investor was officially unveiled, much to the delight of everyone who was present. Mr. Hichilema was quick to mention that the mine was not being handed over to IRH. Rather, his government was just unveiling a new partner on the journey to recapitalize the mine. He said, the mine being one of the country's biggest asset, Zambia should be proud that they have a 49% stake in the company. We are not handing over Mopani. Government remains a shareholder in Mopani, as you have heard, 49%. We are bringing in new partners, partners from Abu Dhabi, the president said. He said the mine has turned the corner, setting the pace for a better future for people, for the people of Kitwe, Mufalira, and the entire country. Today marks a pivotal occasion for the Copper Belt and Zambia as a whole. We bring the breath. You wouldn't want to know what I almost read that word. (laughs) 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 <laughs> Zambia as a whole. Yeah. So uh, we we bring the breath <laughs> we bring the breath of fresh air, a new start for Mopani. <laughs> Mr. Hishilama said. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Woo, that was crazy. <laughs> Zambia as a whole. Whole with L. <laughs> <laughs> we hear you, bro. We can yeah. see your tongue. Yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. So uh, the president was quite excited during this uh, this this briefing. Actually, one of my favorite um, um, public speeches that the president has given. Oh, really? In my view, uh, yeah, I think he was quite. De- I always say when things are tough, mm. as a boss, don't make it tougher by being unpleasant. Mm-hmm. Try to make people smile, crack a few jokes, mm. let people know you're human too and you're suffering too. Yeah. Anyway, take a look. Upon taking office, we realized Mopani was a critical asset to Kitwe, to Mufrila, to Copper Belt, to Zambia. Critical asset. And we took a decision which culminated into what you are seeing today. This is a very important asset. Should never have been allowed to, to, to degenerate, to decline. To, should have never been allowed to risk the integrity of the assets in Mopani, in their totality. You pay the price, you do those things. And I hope the country is learning something out of this. Of course, yes, uh, he looks excited. Well, they want us to see the other videos. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. yeah, that, that that wasn't the the part of the excitement. He, he later came in with a few jokes, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah. he gave a response to Mrs. Nawaki, Miss, Mrs. Whatever. Hey, Ashiri, Tebio, Kare Wangu, Kare Wangu, Kare Kare, Kare Kare, Kare Kare, Kare Kare, Wangu Tache, what Tebio? Wangu Tache Tachani, Wangu Tache Tachani, Tebio Vini. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh so <clears throat> this mine. Eh, it's a long story. Yeah. So you know, my Mopani, first of all, it started uh a long time ago. Pre-independence, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently it started in the is it 1920s or 1930s. Uh it wasn't what it is right now, of course. So we shouldn't give credit to anyone. This is our mine. Mm-hmm. These are our resources. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, I want to just give you a brief history from the time of PF. Because there were a lot of issues at Mopan. Okay. So the time of PF, 
in uh, 2020, just after COVID uh, struck, Makamba struck, eh? Yeah. Not stricken. Struck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just after COVID struck in 2020, there were a lot of issues with business. Yeah. And copper was affected. Mm. So the mining industry was heavily affected. Mm. So we had uh, the, the people who were who had the majority of the shares were Glencore as well as uh, FQM. Yeah. Yeah, but the majority of the shares were with Glencore. But FQM also had uh, a sizable number. So, uh ZTCM had uh, about 10% of shares. Okay. Yeah. So when when COVID came, uh that came about and then Glencore said they were going to put the mine on in care and maintenance. Mm-hmm. What simply that means is that uh, the mine will only be there because it needs to continue operations when they are ready to start. Yeah. What it means is that they are going to lay off the workers. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. only the the there's a combo bunch. Only the ones that we need at the site. Essential workers. Essential workers, very good. They are the only ones that will remain at the site. So the PF government, by then, is also our own issues. Mm. So the PF government saw that because uh, at the time, Mopani uh, employed uh, about 16,000 people. Yeah. Yeah. So there are those like 6,000 who are directly employed. And then there are also the contractors. You know, mm. it's big business to be a contractor in the Copper Bill. Yeah. Yeah. So about 10,000 contractors. So all these people were going to go home to yeah. be jobless. Mm. So the PF around that had my problems. Actually, HH took advantage of this. He went to copper belts and blah blah blah. There mm-hmm. was actually some some public sort of protests. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's funny that now they don't want those. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, after that happened, the PF saw that this is a bad thing that's going to happen. So they decided to go to Glencoe because to them it was like you I'm twisting us, you know. Mm. So they went to Glencoe and said, "This is our mine. So we are going to buy off your shares." This mine mm. is going to belong to ZCCMH. Mm. Now, and you know the PF, a lot of confusion. Mm-hmm. So, Ramaz Amenetes of Funko it was about $4 billion. Mm-hmm. They didn't have that money. Mm. So, they, we ended up making a deal with Glencore and the FQM that uh, will take care of what, uh, what we owe, what the Glencore, what the mine owes to contractors and everyone. Mm. So we'll take care of that. Mm. <laughs> I'm trying to wait. What I'm guessing is that it is. Oh, no, carry on, carry on. <laughs> no, how we are. We're not going to look at your man and go like that. Hey, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. How we are. No, no, no. Don't judge me. Okay. So what happened is we'll that. We'll land judge. <laughs> so we agreed that we're going to take over the mine as ZCCMIH. And then we're going to also take over the debt and all the other obligations of Mupan. Mm-hmm. We also managed it to uh, negotiate yeah. the, what we owe the people. So we ended up uh, with a debt of about $1.5 billion. Yeah. So the PF said, ah, okay, we'll do that. And then we didn't have the money at that time to start. So it was going to be the same thing. Yeah. The mine was still going to be dormant. Because the PF, because what they did was good to take over the mine, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but to take over the mine without a proper plan, that was the worst. And also there are a lot of things that happened afterwards. Yeah. There's a lot of money that was misappropriated. Story for another day. Oh, yeah, yeah. We know. We know. Yeah. (laughs) But the the story is that the mine didn't get back to full capacity. Mm. So that problem at Mopani was there. So Mopani was just like closed. Mm. From that time, they started looking for an equity partner. They mm-hmm. went to Canada, they went to the US, they went to UK, they went to Turkey. I mean, name the countries. Mm. They failed to find an equity partner, which makes me wonder, I mean, what was PF doing wrong? Yeah. 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 So they failed to find an equity partner. So that mind stayed like that. And then as fate would have it, or as youths would have it mm-hmm. in 2021, we mm. gave them the boot. Mm. Now, after that, the UPND came in and then, of course, they inherited that problem. Yeah. So they also now went and started looking for equity partners. And so now we found, found an equity partner yeah. who is ready to pump in. They said they are pumping in uh, 1.1 billion. Mm. And then to me, the best thing about this is that our shares is 49%. I know that probably that means that the decision making will be done by our IRH. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, 49% is not bad not because this bad, time in memorial, we've been having like 10% shares yeah. in Mopani. Yeah. And we say that we're a mining country. 
So for us, at least for ZTTMIH to have this uh, 49%, I mean, that's why he's saying that we're not handing the mine over. Yeah. We're equity partners. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good thing. So I know that this is just a start. Mm. <laughs> there are a lot of things that are going to happen along the way. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, I think it's kudos to the UPND. Yeah. Breath of fresh air. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, President HH. Someone yeah. commented on our video last week yeah. that you should call him, address him as the Republican president. <laughs> because in our camera short video, I was like, this guy, HS, <laughs> 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 address him as the he Republican doesn't, he president. He doesn't know passion. <laughs> when you're speaking passionately, you forget about titles. Imagine. <laughs> yeah. So it's a good thing that's happening at Mupani. Yeah. Yeah. Because also the contractors now will be in business. Mm. The other people will be there. So we'll have uh, more than 15,000 people working there. Mm. So it's a good thing. And also, also, I I just I just hope that eh, I, my share is 49%. It means that my profit here to 49%. I hope there are no hidden deals where we're not benefiting really from the profits. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it truly is a wonderful thing that we have this Mopani deal now and breath of fresh air as uh, this guy HHC. oh sorry Republican president said <laughs> <laughs> and in uh, in ending today's episode I'll leave you with the president on a happy note see you guys next week and uh, I, I was listening to one politician competitor of mine said ah HH likes going to the ranch it's a useless place of his he's just looking at cows Really? You're calling cows useless? Really? These beasts can educate all your children. Now, you can see there's a total misunderstanding of what work is, what business assets is. After saying that about HH, afternoon, she's smiling, drives to the supermarket and buys beef from ShopRite, from Pick and Pay, and she's buying the beef from HH. And she enjoys her dinner. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.